community. Over the past decade, Bitcoin and other cryptocurrencies have gained a lot of attention. Not only from individuals, but also from governments around the world. With more adoption of cryptocurrencies, we will face more regulations. But what exactly can be regulated and what can we expect? That's where the difference between decentralization and centralization plays an important role, what we want to talk about in this video. If you didn't do it yet, don't forget to like our video, subscribe our channel and hit the bell button that you don't miss out on important news and updates. While 100% decentralized exchanges are not under the control of governments, centralized companies are being forced to adapt to regulations. The Financial Action Task Force, in short FEDF, has been founded by G7 countries and originally has been created to prevent money laundering around the world. Since then, more mandates have been added to its priority list, like to combat any threats to the integrity of the international financial system due to the Facebook idea to launch the Libra stablecoin in 2018. Since the goal of cryptocurrencies is to replace the actual financial system, you might not be surprised that governments are not amused about this idea and therefore are regulating cryptocurrencies. They further regulated that all virtual asset service providers, the so-called VASPs, can only operate if their users are being identified if they trade over a certain amount. So they need to go through the KYC Know Your Customers process. In 2020, crypto companies slowly complied with these regulations. Those countries who are not complying to the recommendations of the FEDF are facing to be grey or blacklisted from the FEDF and are often under intense financial pressure. For example, El Salvador, who made Bitcoin a legal tender in their country recently. That's why we are seeing Binance, the biggest centralized crypto exchange, adapting to those rules. In comparison, 100% decentralized exchanges, where the team is unknown, are impossible for the FEDF to regulate. In the following part of this video, while we'll dive more into explaining the difference between decentralized and centralized exchanges. By the way, you might have wondered how you swap your ESU20 DEX tokens on Ethereum for BEP20 tokens on Binance Smart Chain. You can do this easily with the AnySwap bridge, which I'm gonna show you shortly. So you just enter the webpage AnySwap.exchange then your MetaMask directly pops up, you connect it. Make sure you're in the same network, so you need to go to the Binance Chain mainnet. Um, and then you go to Bridge. For copying and pasting the token address, you go to Dex Tools, copy the Dex contract address on Binance Chain and paste it here. Here I have 1000 Dex tokens, I want to swap them, so I click on the balance. Deposit is correct. This is ESE20 to BP20, what I want to swap. And I hit the cross chain deposit button. I need to sign with the MetaMask also. Then I sign. And this might take a while until it swaps. So the procedure took a bit, but um, now I see here my balance. Um, change from here to here. So I have now 1000 uh, DEX tokens on Binance Smart Chain as BP20 token. To add them to my MetaMask, well, here I don't see them. Um, I need to go here to DEX. Then I just click on the plus, the small fox, and um, it will be added automatically to my MetaMask. Here it is. Please do not forget to revoke the permission after using the bridge, like I explained in a past video about the chain swap hack, to make sure that your funds are safe. Now I'll let well explain important differences you definitely need to know about different types of exchanges.
we're going to go over the differences between centralized and decentralized and the pros and cons. So with decentralized exchanges, also known as SECs, are ran by organizations that oversee its day-to-day -day operations like maintenance, security, and growth. The business model of a centralized exchange like Binance, Coinbase, or Bittrex is similar to that of a traditional security exchange that charges a trading fee in exchange for access to the marketplace. This type of exchange acts as a mediating third party that connects buyers and sellers with one another. We have decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, SushiSwap, PancakeSwap, and more. Through the use of smart contracts, a decentralized uh, exchange, also known as DEX, is able to operate somewhat autonomously. The smart contracts in the DEX allows buyers and sellers to trade the directly peer-to-peer -peer without the need for a third party. This allows them to maintain the decentralized spirit of the blockchain. So we're going to go over some pros and cons of both. And we'll start with anonymity. So with centralized exchanges, you may have to go through a registration process, provide your information through a KYC, and most of the time they're restrictive in what you could do. With decentralized exchanges, there's no KYC, there's per it's permissionless ac uh, access, so all you need is literally an Ethereum wallet and you need some Wi-Fi to start trading. For example, if you wanted to sign up on a centralized exchange like Binance, you will have to go through a registration process and there may be restrictions. With a decentralized exchange like Uniswap, it is trustless, permissionless, you have full custody of your coins and nobody can stop you from trading. And just as easy as that, we have completed a transaction and bought 500 DEX. Let's tackle full custody in ownership. This is very important because a lot of people leave their cryptocurrency, all their cryptocurrency, on exchanges. And it's the number one cause of crypto theft and it's a huge no-no. You are leaving yourself at risk to getting hacked, the exchange getting hacked, and or the exchange exit scam. And we've seen so many exchanges just disappear with user funds. On the other hand, with decentralized exchanges, you have full custody of your tokens. You saw in Uniswap where I just traded without having to deposit and I just connected my wallet. So not your keys, not your crypto. Liquidity is one of the major reasons why centralized exchanges have a large lead over decentralized ones. 99% of the liquidity is being traded on the centralized side and we have 1% on the decentralized side. So there's so much room to grow. Without liquidity, price discovery is difficult to achieve and this leads to easy market manipulation. We've seen these protocols like Uniswap introduce awesome tech which really helps with the liquidity and I believe it'll only get better. Fiat to crypto, I want to note this because centralized exchanges have the advantage of being the first interaction most people have with cryptocurrencies. They are one of the only fiat to crypto on ramps. So people that you know are not big fans of them, they're actually onboarding a ton of new users because you know you can't go to Uniswap or SushiSwap and throw your cash or credit card to buy cryptocurrency. You can go to a centralized exchange, set up an account and start using you know, your credit card or wire them or even some places allow you to buy cash. And I believe in the future, we'll see uh, decentralized exchanges build on wraps for fiat to crypto. And lastly, this is support. So with centralized exchanges, you have a support team. You can reach out to them uh, and they can help you when you're in trouble. They are most of the time slow and busy, um, but with decentralized exchanges, you're in control. You're your own bank. Nobody can help you. And if somebody comes out and, and claims they can help you, it's more than likely a scam. Don't trust, verify. And I'll give you guys an awesome example of the differences. So with the recent DEX airdrop, uh, with a new DEX token, the users who held their coins and had their private keys in their own wallets actually got the airdrop. And people who had their cryptocurrency on an exchange, have uh, the, the DEX was actually dropped to their wallets. And now you have to wait for a central authority, you have to wait for the exchange to come and now issue the token to you guys. So that's a clear difference. And I hope you guys now can see a difference between centralization and decentralization. Thank you guys for watching this episode and I'll see you guys in the next episode.